Welcome to Bean Stuff. On today's episode, we are going to be talking about the Chemex. That's right. It's uh, been around a little while, you know, 1800 to, well, that's when the guy was in, uh, nine, 1942. I was going to say that's when the guy was born who invented it. 1942, was it? Who, who released it? Oh, what was the gentleman's name? Peter, I'm not going to do very well on my German here, but uh, Schlumbum. Ah, Schlumbum. That's my best Kiwi junior, uh, German. Good old Peter, giving us the Chemex in 19, or 1942, you said. Okay, gotcha. So it's been around for a long time. It was around when the big method of that day was, don't hit me, the percolator. Oh, my. I think it ran about... 60 plus percent people using that and then the chemists came along changing things up well and for for those who may not know can you give us a brief just like a two second description of a, what a percolator is well a percolator um yeah a percolator i used to love it on sunday after church we would uh, have visitors around and we would make coffee and my mum allowed me to make the coffee even at a young age but it basically is you put the, the, the coffee in a filter at the top, mm-hmm. you have water that comes is heated and boiled and comes up through a little little cylinder in the middle, comes up and bloop over the coffee and it comes drips back down and then it sucks that same um, liquid back up. And that is the problem with the percolator. It comes up, bloop, great, up, bloop, that's all right, bloop. Oh man, we're getting a bit of taste coming out because it keeps... Because it's over, is it over extracting the exactly, coffee? Exactly, exactly. Too, gotcha. too long. Gotcha. So in 1942, the world gets the opportunity to have better coffee. That's right. That's right. It's it's not as autom- automatic, of course, because it's a manual system compared to just turning it on and off it goes. And you've got to be stick around for this machine. Well, and I, I guess in my naivety, or however you say that word, um, one of the things that I... I I stupidly did not think it had been around for that long because it, it does seem such a... I'll put it in air quotes in my in in real life. No one will hear it, but air quotes. It, it's been such a cool thing that people have kind of adapted recently. It feels like it has, has had a resurgence of of its popularity. And you're right; it's gone up. I mean, you've lost touch with it. You haven't heard about it much. But in the last years, yes, it's come back again. And and I'm sure that a lot of people listening may know what a Chemex is. But you know, just in case somebody doesn't, what what does a Chemex look like, Ned? Chemex, it actually looks really cool, may I say? I agree, very it, cool, uh, very stylish. We've got one in front of us here, actually. You're um, missing a piece on it. it uh, <laughs> that's, that's there's different styles, Reed. Um, uh, but basically, it's glass made of it's it's heat treated, so it doesn't suddenly shatter. They did have some plastic ones out earlier on. Really? Yeah, but the coffee would get into the cracks of that, and it just didn't do as well. Mm. I'd get a glass one, even though they could break. If you got it on a stove top, I mean, like a glass stove top, you want to have a little one of those little wire things to. Well, and keep a lot it of times, if you if you're not if you're using a Chemex, you're not typically going to be using that in a space that's Correct. Know, camping or those kind of things. Usually, if you're using a Chemex, it's inside. It's that's right. relatively safe. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, and that's that's one of its beauties. It's it's simple. I mean, there are many methods. This is one is the Chemex, and the Chemex. Is the style looks like an hourglass? Yeah. And it, the typical classic ones would have a little wooden piece around the middle with a little bit of leather tie there, holding it together so you don't burn your fingers when you actually lift up the machine. Yeah. Well, the the apparatus. <laughs> um, and then there's been uh, from that that that's what it sort of looks like. Um, it's about what would you call that? Is that about a foot, just under a foot high? Yeah, maybe like three quarters of a foot. Yeah, like 30 centimetres. Something like that. <laughs> and, and then you've had Bowden brought out one. Um, you've had the automatic one, which is a little more automatic, um, a little more... So there's some actual kind of like machinish. A little more like, yep, exactly, yeah. exactly. And so there's been different ones. My favourite one, I don't know why, I've, I got the one that has not the little wooden neck in the middle, but it has the little glass handle to it. Oh, yeah. I find that easier for pouring um, rather than holding the middle and hoping you're not going to tip things over. But you have the glass and it, it pours really nicely. Yeah. So there are uh, several different options. There's there's even different, quote unquote, makes of unofficial Chemexes, but That's similar correct. processes. And the other big difference is not differences, but you've got three cup, four cup, six cup, eight cup. There's different sizes of them too, depending yeah. on how much uh, coffee you're going to make. Well, and is Chemex, is that the name of the process or is that just the name of the brand and like the device? Like, you know, Kleenex is a right. tissue. Yes. Is Chemex a it's, process or? No, it's more the, well, it's sort of both, but it, it's the brand. That's what they Chemex Corporation called it, the Chemex. 
and uh, I hope they probably, like a lot of other things, hoped that it would take on as the pour over, which is what the style is, a pour over coffee. Right. Um, hoping that people, when they used the word pour over, they would exchange that for Chemex because there's a lot of others, there's other pour over methods. Like I was saying, one, well, I was saying to you earlier, one of my favorite using the same glass apparatus is the cone. That's yeah. with a K, K-O-N-E. And I actually prefer that myself. It's a preference. Right. But uh, it's it's a little different to the, the the paper filter that we'll look at. Yeah, and I think we're going to get into that a little bit more in depth as well. Um, and just a real quick thing, if you hear us slurping some coffees, oh, we are drinking some good... We actually... We are drinking a French press today. We... I don't know. We we just didn't make a Chemex for some yeah, reason. Yeah, but. <laughs> yeah. I, know. I thought of after I like pouring hot water and I thought as it was going off the boil, I thought, oh, I could have made a, a cone or a Chemex. I could have done that. But to be fair, we have the, the Chemex apparatus um, right in front of us. So it wasn't next to us when we were making coffee. Right, so, right, right. Yep. But uh, no, next time we'll have to make, you know, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> if you're going to do that, we're going to have to think about making the sock. You're going to have to make uh, the the. the Co- uh, the, uh, sorry, the there's there's many different methods that you right. can make coffee. This is just one of them, and one of them is the Chemex, and you can do different variations. Just say it's the cone, mm-hmm. but if you do other ones, there's a lot of them. We may touch on them at different uh, podcasts. Yeah, and well, I, I guess to give someone a, a brief kind of overview of what the Chemex is, it's it's almost a self-contained all-in-one contained pour over mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. you have the portion that's filtering the coffee you also have a basin res- you know a reservoir receiving that coffee um and then it's almost like a you know having something you can then use that to pour from so mm-hmm. if you've never seen a chemex before it is a pretty cool way to do almost you know a multi-cup pour mm-hmm, over in a sense mm-hmm. so it's, it is nice and it's also good for you know just doing it for yourself it's it's fairly simple fairly easy to yeah, clean you can do that. one cup you can do four cups you know you, you can it can it's it's got a lot of variation that way yeah and so i think it's a really cool way and how much how much do one of these cost just roughly i don't I know i haven't looked recently but you know they're not cheap i would say you're probably talking around about the 40 dollar mark uh, i would gotcha. think and then yeah well and i guess we'll get into filters in a second here but yeah so it's about 40 dollars which is not not too crazy. I mean, if you think about how much you spend on coffee a week, if you're buying coffee, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, that's that's you know a couple of weeks, and you're you've you've easily purchased that. Um, so real quick, I think we're gonna go through the process here in a second. But what are some of like the benefits or like you know reasons that Chemex is is is, is good? Yeah, um, some would say the taste. They like the particular taste from the Chemex more and the paper filters, which is now you're getting different methods again of different paper uh, filters they use. The Chemex filter, it's got this thing, is it called a trifold? Um, it's a little thicker than, than, than just your normal one-sized, um, one-layered uh, filter paper. You can get bleached, you can get all sorts of you know variations of it. Well, and I guess to butt in with a quick question yep. is the different types of filters you use Mm -hmm. and i'm thinking specifically paper at the moment but Mm -hmm. you know if you were to use a cone filter like we'll talk about Mm -hmm. um are those those are going to affect the flavor like if you have a bamboo filter versus a cotton paper Mm -hmm. filter Mm -hmm. those kind of things are those going to very good read that you you know his names (laughs) i got lucky (laughs) (laughs) um but but those are are do you are you i guess are those going to affect the flavor oh they will and i'm not going to say they're adverse or, or you know great uh, for the coffee because it's sort of a preference thing at that point. Is it kind of like wine being aged in an oak barrel as opposed to mm, it's good, whatever yeah. other kind of barrel yeah. there might be? Yeah, that's similar. It's going to affect it, but mm-hmm. the even the same wine in the different barrels. And I, any wine lovers out there might, you know, say I'm wrong, but it it's going to have a similar taste, but there is going to be slight differences that are neither bad nor good. Yeah, you're right. It's it's not going to change the if you got I mean the, whatever coffee you buy and grind and put in there, it's that's going to stay that that flavor. Right. But you will tweak it somewhat, and the tweaking part of it in all these different methods um, is going to be you're going to deal with acidity and body would be the two major things you're going to change in the coffee house. Thi- wow. Yeah. So the paper filter is actually going to change somewhat the acidity and the, um, and the, you said it was the body as well. It, that's correct. It is. It, it you know, being wow. that paper, that filter paper, uh, it retains more of the oils in some ways so that mm. we don't go into the, oh, the coffee itself compared like to a French press that doesn't retain it. And that should get more body in a French press. Interesting. Which is, I keep saying this, which is sort of why I like the cone, which mm. I should say the cone is very similar, but it's, it's a, what do you call it? A permanent filter. It's, it's a metal, it's, yep. just, it's a metal, not mesh. It's like a, I'm looking at it right here in front of me, but it's like, yep. it's metal with 
just tiny holes that yes. you can't like if you run your hand over the surface, you, you can't, can't actually feel, yeah. even feel the holes. It's a precise little instrument, really. And that, this, that's what you're looking at is the third edition. They've had one, two, and three. And the difference in the editions mainly is where the holes are being placed, so how it comes the water comes out through the coffee. And mm. one we're I'm just looking at the side of here. So it's cone coffee filter and it's made by the Able Brewing Equipment. Yeah company so if you guys are curious we'll yep. put a we'll put a link to yep. this we'll also put a link to the chemex um in our description as and well. i would after this google both chemex and cone and yeah and see how because it's going to be hard on a podcast to tell you how to make one right but uh you'll we'll give it a shot though you'll give it a shot we'll make <laughs> noises we'll do things but uh, but uh you'll probably need to look at it and see how and people have different ideas of how to pour the coffee but uh and so we'll talk about the cone later. So we're getting, uh, um, but that's what I was going to say about the cone. The cone seems to bring to me the best of both worlds. Mm. So you get the, the oil and you get some sediment, but not as much sediment, which is the things left over once you push the French press down. Right. Um, it looks like little sand. Mm -hmm. And uh, French press has a lot of that, whereas the cone has some mm. because that sediment actually has some good flavors in it. Well, and I guess a real quick question that, just popped into my head is is does the paper in my head the paper filter seems like it's going to reduce the amount of sediment in the coffee more than the cone would do you find that i mean i guess is yes that, is that that's correct. accurate which is sort of a good and bad the the paper filter filters a lot more out mm. and the, as you said the, it filters out the sediment a lot of that but some of that is actually good to get through well, and, and I guess is the sediment, we can think of that as extremely finely ground coffee. Mm -hmm. So Correct. there is going to be some extraction from that mm -hmm. if there's sediment in the bottom of your cup. Exactly. exactly. So it's possible if it's through a paper filter and you let your cup of coffee sit for two minutes versus through a cone filter and it sits for two minutes, there's going to be more extraction mm -hmm. through the cone filter coffee that's been sitting that's continuing yes. as opposed to the paper filter. Yeah. Whether okay. it's distinguishable or not is up to you. I guess it's not, it may not be mm -hmm. like grotesquely obvious actually but it makes me think that's why in some sense you, some, some people get excited about having a french press I, i'm one of those but they have french <laughs> presses that they can travel with and they push it down uh -huh. in like a thermos glass sort of idea yeah so then they can just carry on drinking it but the disadvantage of that is they pushed it down but those sediments that you're just mm. talking about continue to extract in the cup right and you really want to get rid of those to stop the process so you don't get over extraction again. Right. Um, I just have a new podcast episode about French press cups and all those kind of things. Oh. But but I think that is another advantage of the of the Chemex. And it's not exclusive to the Chemex, no. but is the fact that your coffee is never being constantly extracted once you've poured the water through. I mean, like once you once it's gone through the filter, yes. you're no longer your coffee's not sitting with the grounds anymore. Mm-hmm. So there is no, you know, there's no possibility for it to be just continually extracting off that ground coffee. Which reminds me of the, the Chemex. It's a sort of a more manual process, more hands-on sort of situation going on here. Compared right. To just pushing the button and leaving and coming back. Right. Or pushing the button and it automatically starts at 6 o'clock in the morning when you wake up, which is not a good idea. <laughs> That's because, another episode as well. Oh, sorry, yeah. Staling but, coffee over 12 hours oh, while you're asleep. My, oh, my, my. my. Sorry. Um, what I was going to say was that that manual, you can control how much extraction you get. You can pour faster, slower. And then the other part of that is the grinds themselves. You can coarser, finer, can change the speed of the coffee, which is an ever ending, never ending, I should say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that you always, there's little art to it of how fast right. you're going, how you're feeling that day, what the humidity, are you on Mount, top of Mount Everest or are you down sea level? I mean, it changes things. Elevation brewing. Ooh, mate. Right. Well, and I, oh man, I just got so many questions that popped into my head. <laughs> but one of them is, I, I, and I know in our, our episode saying, does the grind matter? We talked about some kind of things mm -hmm. of like, the grind size so there may be some information that we don't cover that may have been covered already yes. in that but my my question oh man so many one of my questions is the pour rate so the rate that i'm pouring coffee over the grounds in the chemex how is it going to affect that if i pour it faster or slower what's yes. i guess because in my head i immediately think like oh it's the same amount of water going through mm -hmm. does it make a difference mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i guess that's my first question does it make a difference how fast or how much you pour at a time it does because with all these different methods and there's little tweaks to them all, you don't want to pour water on the filter part, the paper part, because that's got no coffee on it. Right. You may not want to um, 
you may want to go near the middle of the coffee that you, you've ground the coffee, right. you've put it in the filter at the top, and just how fast you pour it. If it's just, if the, you really, uh, some would say you want to pour it so, here's the, here's a little tip here of, yeah. of, of how the rule is, pour it so that it's not, the coffee's not suspended. What I mean is the coffee doesn't suddenly mm. start floating the top because you put so much water in there. Right. You want it just enough to get water, keep water going over it without the water level coming so high. If you've got you know more than one cup sort of ones, you're going to have definitely more water in there, but you don't want it to overflow. You, but it's not like a, you don't just pour a bunch of water and wait for it to go no, down. Pour no. a bunch of water and wait for it to Which go down. Which is whole the whole idea of the of of, of the Chemex is is control, and you right. want to as you were talking about the speed of it, you want to control that because there's another factor in here, mm. and that's called time. Right. Well, and, and, I, and I guess really quickly, the pouring aspect of it, are you kind of pouring it so that there's a constant flow of coffee out the bottom of your filter and just enough water inside of that to kind of keep that constant flow without just dumping a bunch in and right. leaving it? And there's a there's a trick. There's tricks there, too. You do want a, a sort of constant flow. You don't want a rush of stuff coming. Otherwise, you've got under extraction now, the opposite. Right. And uh, But you do want it to happen. And what I was saying about time it depends on how big, how much, but you know, you're talking three and a half, four and a half minutes right. for the whole process to be over. Wow. So if you're still pouring water in at four minutes, you're going to have some strange tasting coffee. Well, and you talked about under extraction for a second there. Is is under extraction, the way I think about it, is there's so much co- so much water in the filter that the weight of the water pushes it through faster than the extraction of the coffee can actually fully go or fully kind of go through that process yeah, that's right you're right and under extraction means it just hasn't had time to sit with the coffee because you know what is it 80 or 60 percent 70 percent of the coffee is just cellulose it's just you can't mm. pour it's not porous it can't get into so the other 30 percent needs time to for the water to sit over that mm, yeah which is now we're on back onto grounds grinds again of of the surface area you want to make sure you've got the right and you don't want for a, a Chemex, you don't want it to be fine like an espresso. Otherwise, you will right. find you will pour the water in and you can't pour any more water in because <laughs> it's like a plug suddenly. It just doesn't yeah. go anywhere. Well, and I think of it like flour and water. If you have a bowl of flour and you put a little bit of water in, you get like a tacky kind of a mm-hmm. substance. And water is going to go through that pretty slowly because mm-hmm. it's, it's still pretty tacky, packed Yes, you know, flour. If you pour a bunch of water in, it's a very thin mm-hmm. viscosity, and water is going to be able to kind of like there's the flour is no longer creating like a pack or a filter mm-hmm. for it mm-hmm. to go through. Like you think of an espresso, it's packed coffee yes. it's going Correct. through. Yep. Whereas if you put too much water, it's like that packed piece is almost just dispersed everywhere. So it's possible for water just to kind of. Like yes. you said, not have enough time with the, the ground coffee. And to add on to that, which you're correct, is that it's you can look at another analogy as putting stones or rocks, mm. larger rocks, and you'll pour it in and they just go straight through the whole thing very quickly. They don't get time to pack, like you're saying, a flower. Right. It's, uh, it's, it's too coarse now, which the coarse is the French press. Right. And yeah. we're talking about here of a of a uh, Chemex, it's sort of, it's mid, it's mm. not coarse, it's not fine, if you're going to air a little more on the finer rather than the coarser. Right. Well, let's jump into kind of steps on making a, 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 a I almost said a cone coffee. Yeah, like yeah. Making a, <laughs> That's good. I've, I've taught you well. Oh, you're, yeah. <laughs> Ruined you. Your influence is, 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 is affecting me. <laughs> um, so let's, let's jump into step number one. I've got the Chemex. Yes. How much ground coffee do I need in there? Well, cause and it, I guess it depends on yeah, how much coffee I'm how making. How much, let's say more one, two cup sort of thing you're thinking about. And uh, there, I mean, the rule would be, and you're going to change this for your own preference. Right what you're wanting out of it. But, but it's a starting off place. Just a ballpark figure, let's say 50 grams. That's an easy one to remember. 50 grams okay. of coffee you're going to grind to that sort of medium to fine-ish sort of style there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and you'll uh, grind that to about, and then there's the water part, and let's say 700 grams to keep ourselves easy here. Um, and that's how much you're going to boil in the jug. <laughs> a little tip here, by the way. You can get all this worked out and done Right. And you find you haven't quite put enough water in the, the kettle <laughs> and the boiling apparatus, oh, whatever you're using it, and right. suddenly you've got to boil more water and it's cold. Temperatures and get off. That's <laughs> right. And your temperature's going up. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and okay, so, and I, and I, 
the coarseness we're looking for is about the like a like sea salt kind of. Yeah, that's a good good analogy. Yeah. Yeah. So we're looking for a good a, a, a pretty coarse grind on the scale of coarse to fine. Mm-hmm. And then we're looking for 50 grams of ground coffee and mm-hmm. 700 grams of yep. water. And this kind of, uh, you know, unless you have an incredibly accurate hand scale, as in your hand. Yes. Um, oh, right. Yeah. Uh, you're going to need a scale a or scale, some kind of yep. measuring tool. And that, I don't think, th- I think of that and I get scared. I think of like really expensive scales, oh, right. which you can get. They're you super can. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that you can also just get any you know, scale that you have in the cupboard that measures flour or, you know, yeah. anything that's going to go to grams you, you or ounces. Do, that's right. I, I mean, coffee industry is very much into metric, so it's a lot of gram stuff, and you'll hear me talk grams more than, than you know, ounces and so forth. Yeah. But um, you do want a, a scale that's not, what do you call it, the analog, I'm not sure, that which the little you needle want a goes digital scale You want a digital. It's going to give you that, that yeah. kind of more, more finite yeah. kind of... Uh, read out of what you're actually and you're right you can buy some pretty good ones on wherever amazon at your local you know wherever but yeah if you want to get a really good one and there's a few really good ones. the hario does one we Mm -hmm. i have one at home the akaya yeah it's a really good one because those ones here's a little tip here is they not only show you the weight Mm. they show you the time as well and those are two very important aspects when you're making a, a, a chemix those two in combination yep. are crucial and we'll put links to those as yeah. well so you guys you know I, obviously you don't have to have an, no, a, a hario no. or anything like I that i never started um, off with one of those no but i mean it's just a, a good thing to kind of see and 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 those are super helpful and as we start getting more specific you might find you know as you go through this that oh, i like 60 grams of coffee and you know 720 grams of water. And once you find that, that scale can help you to replicate that consistently. Yes, yes. So step number two. So we've got the coffee, we've got the water. I'm getting thirsty. (laughs) (laughs) My coffee's almost gone. I'm going to have another sip. (laughs) Step number two. So step number two is uh, the filter. So we unfold the filter. So if you're using the Chemex, the the paper filters where you fold it in, is it five separate or four, I fourfold i believe fourfold okay yeah. sorry yeah. about that that's all right uh fourfold you're going to place it into um uh into the in the top portion of your no, chemex I think, by the way, I think it's tr- i think trifold they call it i don't know why oh, i call it fourfold. man i'm doing a bad job oh, me, me too <laughs> <laughs> the trifold yeah that's what we yeah, I mean, okay uh, let's do you. it in 20 folds 20 folds uh so once you've got all the folds however many there are yeah um, well, I should explain that because that is a difference. That's that's the one of the big things of, with the chemix. It starts like a, a like a round piece. You yeah. fold it in half. You fold it in, in in quarters, and then you put that into your top of your uh, chemix. Right. With the th- when you've done that, you put the, the the three layered part out towards the spout. And at, behind it there is just the one layer. It's just how you fold it. And you can look online how, to, how it's done. It, it's sort of, that's what you do with But chemics. there is a technique to there the way it's technique. folded, the yep. thicknesses. So mm-hmm. the thicker part with three layers of paper goes towards the spout of the chemist. Correct. And then the rest of it is around that. So that's, that, that is important and crucial to know. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're using a cone, obviously it's just put the cone in. You don't have to worry about <laughs> it. Another good reason. Um Okay, gotcha. And then so so we've got the filter in. We've got the paper facing the correct direction. Mm-hmm. And we'll, we'll also put a link to uh, how little, to fold that. You can have a lot of links going. It's going to be here. a long description. <laughs> 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 this is our first time trying to explain how to make a coffee. Yeah, and so step number three, you're going to saturate the filter. Yes, that's important. And only the filter with no coffee. Yeah, don't put the coffee in. Yeah, <laughs> no, not a good idea. And you want to do that with the hot water because right. you, you want to saturate it just to get rid of any, if there's any dust and whatever things in the coffee filter. But there's a second reason and that is that that water then goes down into the glass of the Chemex and that just enables it to heat up. You can even put you know a lot in there just to heat it up. As long as, don't forget, you can put a heap of hot water as long as you've got enough to make your coffee. <laughs> right, don't use it all. No, no, no. So, uh, yeah, so it, it is going to... Oh, to, oh. Yeah, you got something? Well, what I was going to say, the other part other than having mm. enough hot water is make sure you tip that water out before you start the process. Right, you don't want that. That'll dilute. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it seems obvious, but yeah. But you never know. Yeah, um, yeah and, th- and that's going to take out some of the flavor of the filter as well. It's going to already have one you know, extraction of coffee through or of water, sorry, through the filter. So it's going to take out, like you said, any dust or any, you know, anything in the filter is mm-hmm. going to take out some yep. of that taste. Yep. It's going to reduce the concentration of the mm-hmm. filter. Mm-hmm. It's also going to heat everything up and then, yeah, make sure you, you pour out that water. 
Um, so yeah, so we've we've got that. You've discarded the water. Um, we're gonna pour our grounds into the oh, into yes. the actual filter. Yep. Give it a gentle shake so that we. And I guess the idea is to get an even surface to Correct. pour water on. Yep, yep. You don't want little divots there or one. You get a slant like a ski slope. Suddenly, all the water is gonna go to the weakest point. It's gonna go down there, and you right. want half of its or three quarters is not even gonna be wet. No extraction <laughs> at all. Right. Exactly. Um, so yeah, we want a nice even surface to pour over. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> <laughs> it's very good. I like that. I like that. Um, and then and then we're gonna start pouring. And I think it's is it four pours? Yeah. Or it, it is depends. that more of just a it's general idea? General idea because the first pour, if we're talking about seven hundred grams of water, right? And you're gonna some are gonna do six hundred, some are gonna do seven hundred and twenty four, whatever. Whatever you finalize. Yeah. At. Yeah. And uh, is that first one, you're going to put water on there. If you put, what do we say, 50 grams, you're going to put grams, yeah. 100 grams on there just to to wet the coffee, the dry grounds there. You, this is the first time you put water onto it yeah. and you're, you're wetting them, just making sure they're all wet. And then you stop. You don't keep pouring because you want this thing they call the bloom. Also, the, the point of the first pour is to saturate the coffee, Correct. almost like you saturated the filter. Yes. You're just prepping the coffee yep. you're 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 it's like starting the engine you're, you're letting it warm up for yep, a second exactly very, very good yep so you're letting it bloom you're letting the the hot water seep in through that seep, coffee and you're letting some gases come out you'll see little bubbles does it's, that kind of activate the coffee in a sense i suppose you could say yeah that's i like that activate the coffee it does and activates things you want to get rid of certain yeah. carbon dioxide whatever you want it to, you'll see it bubble out <laughs> which sounds like a science experiment oh, does it? this is this is going to taste really good by the way you believe me don't need to wear a mask while i'm doing well this? not a bad <laughs> idea <laughs> but um you yeah you want to do that so that you can you're preparing the the, the grounds for your next set of pours well and it does that so you know it's just a small amount of water just to wet the coffee the bloom how long does the bloom last for oh not too long 45 50 seconds gotcha. depends yeah and if it gets to 50 seconds you need to start you don't just enjoy the bloom you say no <laughs> don't I'm, get mesmerized by no the bloom. You keep going keep going and then as you're doing that, does that also kind of help pack the coffee a little bit for its actual pour? Because you're actually wetting it. It's kind of, yes. it's all packing in together. It's, yep. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. So that's, it's, it's a, it is a crucial step. If you just pour a bunch of water in, it's not going to, it's not going to be activated as much. It's not going to be as packed and as, as ready for that. And that, that water. activated, it's another word would be you wanting to make everything as even and standard as possible. So you're not getting one little group of, of the coffee, um, getting more water out for a longer period of time than right. another spot. So you're just trying to just make it all even, and this so the whole cup is going to taste really good. Well, and that's another point. Like if you have you know even a small sp section of dry coffee that's not been yes. activated yet, and then halfway through your pour, you activate that. You're then combining coffee that hasn't been extracted <laughs> with pre extract or pre extracted coffee with post extracted coffee. Oh and my. You know, it, it, it might be minutia at that point that, you know, it's oh, not no, really no. Gonna... You're sounding pretty nerdy at the moment, I'm going to say. <laughs> but it is something, you know, it's it's a consideration that's going to, it will affect the flavor whether or not you notice it or care about it. Yes. It We've probably lost 10 people already. Oh, I can't. <laughs> it's taking way too long. What I find actually is, is, is you do take this precise that we're sort of talking about here. I find once I've made the coffee, I like it even more. Then if I hadn't even thought about it, just put it, you know, like I said, you put it on at six o'clock. You had to work for it. You had to work for it. There's, <laughs> there's some there's some parallel there. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, right. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're pouring the coffee and then once we've let it bloom, so, you know, yes. that 40 second process or whatever, um, then we're going to start actually pouring to get the full extraction. And it, what's our technique for pouring over that? There's different techniques. As I said to you near the beginning, you don't want to pour it on the filter. You want to pour it on the coffee. Some like to pour it just in the middle for quite some time, going really slow. Again, you don't want to just suddenly fill up the filter with, with water. Oh, done. No, you just go very slowly, um, methodically. And some then like to spiral out and spiral in. If you want to impress people, you can do a little zigzag. Egg and people go wow, wow wow yeah well and and i think one point to add that i that i forgot about was the method or the device you're using to pour because you oh, can, you can use you mm -hmm. can use you know an electric mm -hmm. jug or yeah a stovetop that's totally fine that is not 
you you know it, yeah. you, you don't have to have anything specific. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. what's the what's the, oh, I forget the name oh, of it? Oh, what is it? Um, uh, an, a kettle? Um, I mean, a kettle, but a nose goose, a goose nose. What do you call it? I don't remember the name, but I'll I'll put it in the link. Yeah, to that. There, there's there's special <laughs> kettles they make, and you can get different types. When you can get ones right. that actually boil themselves, others that you've got right. to put boiling water into, and that cools the water. So you but they think help about give that. an even stream of water. Yes, it's got a goose neck. Right. So and the the neck of the, the or the spout comes from the bottom. Yeah. Comes up and kind of makes an S curve. Yep. And it just slows the whole process down because that's sort of one of the things you need to do. You don't rush it. Just keep right. it going. So you've only got three minutes. So three four minutes. So, and that just helps you slow it down compared to a just a normal jug kettle. Um, it's got a big spout and it can just plop out and it's hard, much harder to do it slower. Actually, that's what I do. But I I'm trying to control myself and not just let it all out at once. Yeah, so so you can get a consistent pour there. Yes, um, and I think if you just type in pour over kettle, I just yeah. did that on Google here. Oh, yeah. It looks like it popped up. So yeah, uh, yeah, and we'll put a link to to the to one of them as well, so you guys yeah. have some idea of that. So so that's that's. I, you I can by the have. way, I do like the ones that turn themselves turn themselves off automatically. The ones that boil and boil. Down. Yeah, so it just means it just one less step to worry about. Well, you can even get ones that set to temperature and all that kind of stuff. I wasn't going to mention that, but uh, <laughs> you can. So now that we've poured, we've kind of been repeating that process um, for what 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 time frame are we looking for this coffee to be extracted? It's three and a half, four and a half minutes, somewhere in there, and you're going to go shorter sometimes. If you found you've ground uh, your grinds too coarse, you may want to go a little longer, slow it down, or vice versa, depending on this where the time and and weight is going to make a difference. Well, and I think grind. that also depends on your grinder too. Exactly. And again, we, there's that grinder episode we have, does the grinder matter? Because, you know, if you're using a blade grinder, you can absolutely do a Chemex. There's no bars yeah. to doing mm-hmm. a Chemex. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, if you're using a, you know, a burr grinder mm-hmm. or something that you know what setting it needs to be set to, you're going to get a much more consistent, like you're going to know next time I make this, I do the same exact thing. Yeah, you're right. It's going to not worry too much. But, once you move away from the French press, for instance, it's going to become more crucial that you right. get a consistent grind and you need to start thinking about that. Right. And so if you have a blade grinder, you know, absolutely you can still do it, but it is going to be your focus on the consistency of that grind is going to be need to be more acute. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a good Ooh, word. Mate, Ooh, big word. Bringing mate. out the acute word. So three to four minutes or three and a half to four and a half minutes ish. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and yeah, so the other things to consider, like if you're if it's going through too fast, you need mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. make a finer grind, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And if, or if it's going too through slow, you may need to coarsen up the grind. And that's good. And basically, you've done it at that point, and the things to you stop, have arrived. You have a, you've got the drink. <laughs> now enjoy. <laughs> that's right. It that only took four and a half minutes, but anyway, we uh, and half an hour listening to this podcast. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we um, needed to. That's where you can then take the uh, the filter out the top, and yeah. you can throw it away. Compost it's not a bad idea. Some compost people like it. Yeah, exactly. Oh mate. For yeah. those of you who don't know what that is, that's compost. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> didn't know that. Didn't compost. Know that. <laughs> and the other part is you want to use the the liquid that you've got in the bottom of your now chemics. You want to pour that quickly. I usually heat my cups because that is one of the downsides is it can cool fairly quickly. Right. You're not it's a very uninsulated container that's right i had a, a my sister-in-law she um she once made me for my french press a little insulated she made it for me that you fit around your french press and i guess you could do it for a chemix as well a little cozy a little cozy that's exactly that's exactly what it was danger there you don't you don't want to really keep these too long you could put it in a thermos at that point to keep it warm but well, not too i long. think we get into a whole new episode of just you know as coffee keeps even without ground coffee the flavor is going to change it there's will. almost a, a curve of flavor yes. over time kind of a thing correct um, now, can so, we get on to the cone? Yes, I know you've been itching. I don't know how long we've been going, but I do need to talk about the cone. Oh, we can go for as long as we need. Oh, thank uh, you. So we've got thank the, you, So we've talked about the filter, the paper, different types of paper, the different folds, the way the fold goes in the cup or the, the Chemex. So there's, there's quite a lot to that. Mm-hmm. Um, Dad, I know you're so excited about this cone. And I, 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 I like the cone too, but I, yeah, tell, me, tell, me about, tell me some stuff. Some, tell me some things. Tell me the cone. Oh, the cone, um, cone with the made K. by Abel... Brewing equipment. Brewing equipment, that's right. Thank you, Reed. <laughs> uh, and uh, I think it's, it's made here in the US, and uh, they made three versions of it, and their third version is really cool. And really, the only difference of the third version, there's a few differences, it has uh, got a pointy tip, which is dangerous if you're under 
72 <laughs> uh, age. And uh, the other part, it has a, a rim around that rubber rim around the top. It just helps it putting into your Chemex and uh, it keeps it uh, uh, secure uh, in there. And it also means that in the way they've done the pattern of the holes, it comes through just in this really the extraction is, is, I think, done very well. It's not perfect. No no method is, is perfect, but uh, it's right. done really well. Therefore, it allows oils out compared to the, 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 the paper filter that's, that filters those and stops them coming through. It allows some of that through, letting some of the sediment through. And uh, those... I guess you call them micro particles come through and they actually have some flavor to them. Some people don't like having sediment left over in their cup. I find that sort of exciting. Yeah. Living on the edge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, right. and I, I think one thing that pops into mind is with this filter, you are putting coffee through the exact same filter with the exact same holes, with the exact same everything mm-hmm. every time. Yes. Um, so if consistency is something you're worried about, this is going to have, helps. I mean, you know, with the paper filters, obviously, you know, if you're using the same type of filter, it's the same type of paper, mm-hmm. but it's not something that's going to be identical. Um, whereas this is going to have the exact same filter process every single mm-hmm. time. So you are going to get somewhat a consistent flavor over paper if you could even notice it. Yeah. But, and you, you will, but, um, and there's because it's sustainable, so you don't just have to throw it away. It's it's you can use it next time. You don't have to buy more of them, even though it is. A, I, I'm not sure what the price of. I don't know. They're sixty or more dollars. Wow. So they're a little more than buying a you know a packet of of, of um, filters. Although they're going up in price too. Once you've bought this, that's it. You don't have to buy anything else. And what I like about it is it cleans up. They've done a good job on the design because it cleans up really well. Basically, you just tap, tap, tap on, on your, mm-hmm. your garbage. Upside down, tapping on yep, the garbage. Yep, and and then you just need to rinse it out with some of that hot water, that mm-hmm. if you've still got some in your jug. <laughs> uh, and and it, it cleans really well. And they it is even top um, shelf, uh, uh, your dishwasher safe. Although I tend to do mine by hand because it cleans up so easily. Yeah, well, no, I mean, those are some good things. It is very sustainable. It's, you know, you're not, you're going to use it for a long time. It's not going to rust. It's not mm-hmm. going to wear out. It's no. not going to. Yeah, it's like stainless. Yeah. yeah By I mean, the way, the, the good thing, a little tip here, if you if you look at one of these things, is yeah. that clean it while it's warm. Don't gotcha. have your cup of coffee, basically, and then forget it and don't come back because it cleans much easier when it's warm. Mm. If it starts to cool, you, you, you're you going to have to spend some more time on the cleaning. And aspect. I would say if you, if you enjoy the filter, I guess I would say this. If you like the filter with paper. Yeah. Do it. Yeah, exactly. Whatever you like, there that's mm-hmm. what you should do. Because mm-hmm. there's there is no wrong way to do it. Mm-hmm. There's just different ways. Yeah, we're just so fortunate that we have so many different methods and even with a method like Chemex, you've got cone, you've got right. different sized uh Chemexes. I mean, there's we're so fortunate. So right. find one that you like and and go with that. And so the point is, you know, we're not trying to say that this is better. No. It's something that we use and we enjoy. Yep. Um it is going to be, like you said, very consistent. It's mm-hmm. got, mm-hmm. you know, a very simple cleanup. Uh, one thing I like as well is it's going to save a little bit of time because you don't oh, have to fold the filter. Exactly. There's no, oh, mm-hmm. I folded it wrong or the paper filled. You don't have to go to the grocery store wherever and buy another packet. No, right. it's done. It's done. It's there. And I guess my my thing is I would say because it is it is pretty expensive. I mean, that mm-hmm. for a filter, when you think about it over time, it's not too bad, but... I would say get the Chemex if you're if you're if you're mm-hmm. into if you want the Chemex and get paper filters. Mm-hmm. Start there. Start there, and if you say, "Wow, I really like this. This is this is exactly what I want. I want mm-hmm. to continue to do this." Mm-hmm. I would say at that point, then jump to the yeah. to the to the metal filter. There's some places around. I don't know if uh, some places around that use a cone. What well, about a cone? I think I said it, but just to remind you that it's a K O N E, not C O N E, but yes. K O. E. K is in kite. Kite, that's right. <laughs> and uh, But there's a few places that use them, and mm. you may find one around around by or just check on the web. I don't know what you do, but but you could probably try it out and see what you what you like. And you may, over, you know, if you if you have a coffee shop locally that uses uh, pour or the, not pour, but the Chemex, you may just peek your head over the counter and see what they're using. Yeah. They might have a cone, and you say, hey, can I try that? Like we said once before, if you've got your own local place you're going to, they're friendly people. These coffee people are really friendly people. And uh, ask them, say, have you ever used a cone? They may say no. They may say, let's get one. They, you might got have one? Some, they might have some great reasons not to. Yeah, they may do. Or yeah. to use it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, that's. I mean, that's Chemex in a in a small amount of time. It's not obviously All everything. done on a podcast. It's amazing. Right. Um, yeah. So, I mean, if you have any questions, obviously, feel free to let us know. Um 
you know, we have Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. There's even YouTube now. Um, or you can send, uh, or you can check us out on our website, beanstuff.com. Um, you can also, you know what you can sign up for now? You can sign up for an email list. Whoa. We don't send spam either. Whoa. Do you we actually, any, any, get any gifts? Well, maybe in the future, but Ooh. currently we haven't even sent any emails yet. We're still so working <laughs> on what we're going to do with that. <laughs> and I, I like it too. You've sent to me sometimes uh, one or two questions and I sort of look at it and I answer that, send it back to you and you post it however you do that in a miraculous way. <laughs> and, uh, and so it's nice to get that interaction. Yeah, no, we truly, really enjoy uh, focusing on what questions you have. We really want to listen to what you guys have and I mean, we enjoy talking about this, but we know that you guys have some awesome questions. We've had some come in that didn't just didn't. It's been fun to kind of talk about. Mm-hmm. We had one recently about uh, roasting coffee with a at a you know a, a what's that called a co co roasting sort of a, at a local place that has a number of different roasters you can go to and just sort of rent hire, a roaster. Rent yeah. a basically, that's what you do. Roaster for hire. Yeah. So there's been some awesome stuff. So we just thank you guys so much for all those questions that have come in and for all your support. Um, you know, always feel free to comment and to to rate us and, and be as harsh as possible. We like honesty. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today, and uh, we hope that you you got something out of this. We ran a little over or a little longer than usual, but you know it was totally worth it. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for for listening to Bean Stuff. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.